this this is a harmonic beat. They are other people. People must protect themselves against those who what try to steal what right. that I have some sort of possession that somebody else is going to take or if what someone is going to harm them. Therefore, people. Um, have several uh, preventative measures to keep um, themselves against these dangers. And we were talking about it earlier where it's like, we literally have to live in a world where I have to think consciously somebody might steal this from me. Right. You know, when I had um, someone come over um, to my house to fix something, it's like common sense always tells you don't leave your wallet out. Right. You know, not to say that there's any ill intent, but you always have to keep that in the back of your mind right. that I have to be concerned that someone might take something right. from me. So therefore, I need to secure it. Right. Like the the security people make a buttload of money right. just because of perceived threats. Right. You know, it's like why? And I don't think people stop and think like even like police. Why do we need police? We should be able to police ourselves, right. but we can't. Right. We can't police right. ourselves. Right. Imagine right. if there's like no no kind of structure, no anything, that chaos runs amok. But it's like, why is that? And I'm the reason I'm making that point is because it points to human nature. Right. That what we we live in a society where we have to not protect ourselves from the animals or anything like that. Not to say that we don't ever have any uh, interactions with them, but nine times out of ten. It's from another human being. Right. Because we're what? There's a perceived threat that somebody might come, steal something from me, or do harm. It's like, again, it's hearkening back. And like I said, the, one of the aspects of the book is apologetics. Um, and so the reason that I'm emphasizing this is it points to what we live in a fallen world. Right. That because we live in a fallen world, we have to what? Be aware of these things. Right. And I'm always thinking like um, eternal, eternal mindset. It's like, when we spend eternity, we're not going to have any need for right, these things. Right, because I'm not going to have to worry about somebody right. who's going to come and rob me or do harm to me. But only because we live in this fallen world that we have to be aware of that. And therefore, we've got to spend money on things. Like, I've got to spend money on the alarm system because somebody might come right. and do something to me. Right. Like, why? Why right. do I have to be cognizant? Why should I have to? Exactly. Right. Why should I have to? And it goes back to we the depravity of man. Right, exactly. 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 The depravity of man that I have to put these measures in place because there's people out here who will come and take what little I have. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that I have much to do still. But that, that, that's what it is. That's what it, the And I wanted to ask for. you... Um, you know, as many measures as, as men put out there, there's always on, only a 99.9% .9 guarantee on things, right? You never see anywhere, oh, there's a 100% guarantee <laughs> on anything. Yeah. So why do you think man is more comfortable going with that 99.9% .9 guarantee that man can offer versus the 100% guarantee that God offers? Well, I think that's the case. It's like it's it's something that's abstract. It causes us to again get out of our comfort zone and trust that there's something outside of ourselves that we can can do. Again, it, it highlights our limitation. That's why it's so important. When the first chapter says, "In the beginning, God created," because that puts things in perspective that we are the created. Right. We're not the creator, and nobody wants to acknowledge that because what that means that there's somebody who's superior to me. Right. You know, and so for me to acknowledge that what humbles me, right, exactly. I don't want to humble myself to think I'd rather put my trust yeah. in this thing that can be disarmed. I've got an alarm system. Someone can crack that. Right. You know, if someone really wants to take something from me, they can. It's not uh, like you said, it's not a guarantee right. that I'm always going to be protected. All it does is sound an alarm. Right. And hopefully the police come on right. enough time. Yeah. It's not right. like it's going to detain the person. Right. It's not going to do any of those things. Um, so I think people are comfortable with that because it's tangible that I can see it. It's hard to what trust in things that we can't see. Right. And the trust in the abstract idea that God is going to protect me, it's like it sounds foolishness to someone who doesn't believe in God. And it's like we have to understand that there may be times where God may not protect. And we'll get to that. And so that causes people to have hesitations. But yet at the same time, if you're not trusting a guy, you're still trusting in something else. And that's still going to fail you too. Right. You right. know, and so not to say that God is going to fail you, but it's like, ultimately, what are we truly seeking protection from? And that, and again, that's what we'll get to um, further down. But I think, I think that's a great question. Just we, we have a guarantee in God's word right. that we will be protected. But 
our, again, our, protect, our uh, perspective on what we need protection from is flawed. Right. And so if I'm needing protection from another human being, then I, I, I just got my gun. I got my security system. I don't need God. It's a blind spot. Exactly. <laughs> it's a blind spot because it's saying I don't, that's the only thing that right. I need protection right. from. But as we continue, there's something else we need protection from. But uh, we'll, we'll get there. I say this. I say statistics. I'm say every 13 seconds, a home invasion, a home intrusion is committed with um, amounts of uh, 2.5 million uh, home intrusions each year. And then I said this. And again, I'm dating the book. Um, I wrote this back in 2015. So when I got these stats, I was getting it the year prior. Um, so it says in 2014. And I can only imagine it increased. You know, I don't have anything to, to assume that these numbers have changed. Um, but 2014 taxpayers in the United States paid $58 million every hour towards the Department of Defense in comparison to taxpayers paying $7.8 million an hour towards education. I say there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Um, one should be proud to be an American. But it would be unwise to think that uh, the government is the only line of defense. And so I ask this question. I say, what are your thoughts on you see this disparity of defending against a perceived threat, spending all this money against perceived threats as opposed to something like education that gets less funded? And it's like I understand practically why we have to because we're here in America and people want to threaten us. But it's like, man, that's kind of crazy when you right. see this huge disparity of all this money that's going towards defense, right. you know, for a perceived threat, right. you know, what what are your thoughts on that? I, I think it, I think it's wild. I think the, the numbers you put in there were just staggering to mm -hmm. me, honestly. Um, and it, there's still no guarantee, like we were just saying. Yeah. And so it it, it just blows my mind, and I feel like you know, it's like, what are we doing? What mm -hmm. like where, where do we see the fruits of all this yeah. this effort, resource, mm -hmm. and money that we're putting towards this? You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just feel like it's <laughs> it's crazy, and the reason, and again, like I said, I'm hopefully those are listening. I'm trying to make the point that because we live in a fallen world, where we have people what in North Korea that threaten us with nukes, that we've got to what right. buffer up our military, buffer up our defense. Why do we have to worry about this dude in this other country coming to like bomb us? Right. And again, again, keeping things in perspective, I know America has done the same thing, so I'm not ignorant of that. The whole point that I'm making is that we live in this fallen world where we need to spend millions upon millions of dollars for defense. Imagine if we didn't have to have that worry right. where all that money could have gone to other things, right. where we have poverty. We have all these things that plague us, but we've got to send all this money to what? Uh, to the Department of Defense. So what? That we can protect ourselves. Why do we need to protect ourselves? Because what people seek to do ill will, that we have this deception that our enemy is another human being. Right. North Korea sees America as a threat. And not to say that America hasn't, hasn't earned it or whatever the case right. is, but this whole the, my whole point is like, we that's the world that we live in. And you devoid God of the situation, it's kind of bleak. Right. Like, this is, it, right. it seems futile it's that like we're throwing all this money. Exactly. Every day. We're yeah. throwing all this money away. And it's like, man, that money could go towards other things. Right. And it's like, again, Devoid got out of the equation. There's just no hope for anything getting better. It's not like 20 years from now there's going to be peace. Right. Like I, I don't think anybody believes that yeah. that <laughs> things are miraculously <laughs> going to uh, to get better. Um, and 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 so just just highlighting that. And then I say, in fact, the Second Amendment says uh, Americans have the right to bear arms. Though this causes much uh, debate and controversy, the point is security and protection. Our premium or at a premium however when protecting someone or something the fundamental question is who or what is one guarding against and and like I said I'm glad that I did this topic especially at the time that I did even though it's always been plaguing us but this is a huge issue right huge issue that divides the country with gun control right. all this this that and the third even in Florida when it's like the teacher exactly arming even teachers I saw one thing was like they were arming teachers with rocks or something. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah, you go. <laughs> I just caught that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, arming teachers with, with, with rocks and stuff like that. Um, what are your thoughts? Even though I know it's like a super controversial and an extremely broad question. What are your thoughts, whether it's in regards to gun control, the Second Amendment? Just curious to hear uh, someone else's perspective uh, on it. 
I think it, it, it provides a, a false sense of security, mm -hmm. honestly, and I think on the opposite spectrum, it really exposes our, our vulnerabilities, right? Because if you think about it, why do I need a gun? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel threatened, because mm -hmm. I feel vulnerable, because I feel weak, right? So I think that a lot of times we, we, we as people feel that with, with, with the need for protection, that the more of it, the, the stronger I feel, the more protected that I feel. And, and going into the whole idea of just weapons in the classroom, I don't understand how people can feel like, well, that, that's making this a safe <laughs> space. Because what if somebody gets a hold of it, right? Yeah. You know? It's it's all it always goes back to the the depravity of man. Somebody mm -hmm. can take this, which is used for protection, yeah. and then misuse it. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a rock. Right. Like, <laughs> we can use it for constructive purposes, yeah. but we can use it for purposes of harming someone if we throw it or we swing it or you know whatever you know. So do you would you lean on the side of banning all guns or? Where would you stand? Because I think the argument for the Second Amendment, I'm not too much a uh, history, but the most that I do know is just, I guess, um, they didn't have it, I guess, in uh, under British rule. And so when they came to America, because they wanted to make sure, like, I guess the government just couldn't take over. Right. So that if we can arm the citizens, we can prevent any kind right. of, like, you government. Right protect take, yourself, exactly, right. You have the right to protect yourself. So I'm I'm fine with it. I think the argument um, surrounds about around, like, assault weapons. Right. Um, but, again, you still have the same argument. Um, if someone still wants to commit this crime, they'll find a way. Right. So I get that um, argument as well. Um, but what are your thoughts on, like, should guns just be banned altogether? Um, should it just be a ban on certain types of guns? Like, do you think there is any solution to this problem that we see where it's like, you're not even safe at school, not even safe at church? True, know? right. Um, I don't, I don't think that, that you should get rid of guns. I don't think we as people should get rid of guns because I don't, think that's the solution. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to the depravity of man, if guns aren't there, you still find something right, else. You'll find something <laughs> else. They had spears before that, right? <laughs> <That's about it. laughs> so I don't think I don't think we should get rid of guns, but I think it all comes down to the use, the purpose, and whether or not it's it's being misused or not. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I agree. Um I think again the argument is because there's an assault that you can kill in such mass. Right. Um, so I get that argument, but um, I think we should do whatever we can to try to minimize that. But once again, it, it points back that we live in a fallen world. And I, and I always want to be careful of not being complacent and using that as like a crutch. Um, because I, I definitely do that in other areas, especially when it comes to voting. It's like, what's the point of voting? Right. It's like, it's not going to get better. Right. You got both awful candidates. Well, I know that's a bad mindset to have, right. that you should still be active here while you're on earth. Um, but yet, again, having that balance of, of realizing that even though we do these things, which I think we should, I don't, I don't think it's necessary for someone to have an AR-15 right. or whatever. Like, it's literally for the purpose of war. Right. Like, it's not right. for, like, civil it's use. It's excessive to protect yourself. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> and it's like, it's easy for us to, to say that because we're not gun enthusiasts right. and this, that, and the third. So I understand someone has that right if they want to. Um, but again, it, it, it's, it's more of a, a, a heart thing, right? you know, it's more of, of what am I needing protection mm -hmm. from? And you said it, you said the key word, it's a blind spot right. where we think another human being is our ultimate enemy. Right. Another human being is not our um, ultimate enemy. But once we have that mindset, it's what we've got to prepare for the apocalypse and right. like have like a bomb shelter right. and all this stuff right. there. And it's like... I understand the adage is better to have it and not need it and need to not have it. I get that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, man, what what can we do? Because like I said, even if we stopped all these sight uh, rifles from being sold, they still get sold illegally. Right. You know. Um, they